Note that in this example, we were given the description of a curve and then we were asked to find a vector function for it. And in the next three or four examples, we will either identify and sketch the graph of a given vector valued function or give a vector function for a curve given its or some of its geometric properties. Uh, first, we consider what happens when one of the components of a vector function is zero function or some other constant function. Well, in that case, the space curve is just going to lie on the plane, or on a plane, rather. For example, if the k-hat component of a vector function is zero, then its graph just lies on the x-y plane. For instance, consider the vector function r of p given by p squared i hat plus e plus 1 j hat. Here, the k-hat component is 0. Since the components are all polynomials, the domain of this function is the set of real numbers. Since the k-hat component is 0, then the graph of this function just lies on the x-y plane. And so, we can drop the third coordinate or the third component. So when we substitute some values of p, you just get two-dimensional vectors as images. When t equals negative 2, the, the i-hat component is 4, and the j-hat component is negative 1. And similarly for these other vectors. Now we take the position representations of these vectors. Again, the initial point is at the origin. So the terminal points will have coordinates equal to the components of the corresponding vectors. So we have 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 4, 3, generating the blue curve. And this is indeed a parabola, and we can find its equation by eliminating the parameter t. We have the parametric equations x equals t squared and y equals t plus 1 for this vector function. Since y equals t plus 1, we have t must be equal to y minus 1. And substituting to x equals t squared, we get that a Cartesian equation for this parabola is x equals y minus 1 quantity squared. Next, let's consider the vector function r with components 2, 2 sine t, and cosine t. These are the parametric equations. And since the first component is constant, then the curve lies on the plane with equation x equals 2. And then I hope you also recognize from the discussion of parametric plane curves what equation y and z here satisfy. We get y over 2 equals sine t so that any point satisfies the equation y over 2 quantity squared plus z squared equals 1. Now, this equation defines an ellipse on the yz plane. So, in effect, what we get is a copy of the ellipse y squared over 4 plus z squared equals 1 on the plane with equation x equals 2, which is parallel to the yz plane. So, to sketch the graph of the curve, let's just substitute some values for t. For instance, when t equals 0, we get r of t equals 2, 0, 1. When t equals pi over 2, we get 2, 2, 0. When t equals pi, we get 2, 0, negative 1. And when t equals 3 pi over 2, we get 2, negative 2, 0. Thus, the curve or defined by this vector valued function is the blue curve here, where again the arrowheads indicate the direction in which the curve is traced. Now, I would like to point out that the equation y squared over 4 plus z squared equals 1 is the equation of a cylinder in three dimensional space. And in fact, it's the cylinder having or generated by the ellipse 
with equation y squared over 4 plus z squared equals 1, say lying on the yz plane, and with rulings parallel to the x-axis. Therefore, the curve then must lie on that cylinder as well as the plane with equation x equals 2. Therefore, we can think of the curve as well as the intersection of that elliptical cylinder and the plane with equation x equals 2. I wanted to point that out because in general, there are instances where space curves will be given as intersections of surfaces in space. Now, the question is given, say that a curve is the intersection of some surfaces, can we find a vector function for it? Well, one way to do that is the following. If from the given equations of the surfaces, two of the three variables can be written as functions of the third, then we can let this independent third variable be the parameter. And then using the given equations of the surfaces, we can solve for the other variables in terms of that parameter. Let's have an example. Consider the curve of intersection of the cylinders with equations z equals y cubed and x equals y squared. Now, before we obtain this vector function, I would just like to illustrate the described space curve. Now, this is not necessary in the solutions. Again, just for illustrative purposes. Now, the cylinder with equation z equals y cubed has rulings parallel to the x-axis and is generated by the graph of the cubic function on the yz plane. We have the cubic function on the yz plane and the rulings parallel to the x-axis. Meanwhile, the cylinder with equation x equals y squared is a, I'm oh sorry, is generated by a parabola with vertex at the origin and opening in the positive x direction and having rulings parallel to the z-axis. The intersection of these two surfaces then is given by this green curve here. Now, going back to the equations, notice that z and x are written explicitly as functions of y. Thus, we can think of y as the independent variable here, and we set y to be the parameter t. Now, from these equations, we obtain that z equals t cubed and x equals t squared. And therefore, a vector function for this curve of intersection is the vector function with components t squared, t, and t cubed. Now, let's consider the intersection of these two surfaces. The first equation is that of an elliptical cylinder with rulings parallel to the z-axis. In particular, the major axis of the ellipse or the generating ellipse lies on the x-axis and the minor axis lies on the y-axis. And we have that this is the surface with the first equation. And from the previous lecture, we, because this equation is a linear equation in x, y, and z, then we know that it represents a plane. And because it involves only two variables, y and z, we can also think of this as a cylinder with rulings parallel to the x-axis and generated by the line with equation y plus z equals 3, lying on the yz plane. Thus, the intersection is the green curve illustrated here. Now, Notice again that both equations involve y. And from the second equation, we can write z in terms of y. z equals 3 minus y. But if we try to isolate x from the first equation, we get x squared equals 1 minus y squared over 4. All of that times 9. So that x 
will be equal to plus or minus square root of some expression here involving y. And that does not represent a function. Thus, we will try to parameterize in another way. And for this, we just recall our parameterizations of ellipses using trigonometric functions. So we think of x squared over 9 as cosine squared t, y squared over 4 as sine squared t, so that we may take x over 3 to be cosine t and y over 2 to be sine t. So that we have the following parameterization of the generating ellipse x equals cosine, uh, 3 cosine t, and y equals 2 sine t. Since we now have an expression for y, and in the second equation, we can solve for z in terms of y, then we have the following expression for z in terms of t. Therefore, a vector function for this curve of intersection is the vector function with components 3 cosine t, 2 sine t, and 3 minus 2 sine t.